Hi, creative friends, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I have a really fun makeover. This desk was about to be thrown into our landfill, so I'm repurposing this dated desk into two updated nightstands. This desk was fighting me every step of the way, <laughs> but it was well worth it. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. So here's the desk I started with. One of Nick's clients was going to throw it away, so he asked me if I'd like it. And of course, I mean, it's a great, well-made maple desk. Uh, I know it's heavy duty because when I was bringing it downstairs to my studio, I dropped it down about five or six stairs. The desk was perfectly fine, even though it hit the bottom wall, but my knee got bruised. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was a sign that I don't know I was gonna have a rough time with this one but again I'm so glad because I learned a lot with this makeover so I started by giving it a really good cleaning with a TSP substitute and removing the old hardware which I'm keeping for another makeover then it was time to disassemble this desk. Every desk is a little bit different. Uh, I've worked on a good few of these now, changing a desk into nightstands because nightstands just sell much better in my area. Um, minus maybe around September when kids are going back to school, etc. But usually two nightstands sell much faster than a desk well. So to take them apart, I removed this desktop by unscrewing the screws from underneath. After I removed the center drawer and unscrewed the middle frame of the desk. Then there's usually a backing or a support bar on the back also. And if you hit it with your furniture mallet or hammer, that support just pops right off as well. So now I have two nightstands to work with. Once I decided I was going to go with a bit of a more modern look for these nightstands, I decided to switch the whale tail skirts into something with a little more clean lines. I used a woodworking square and a sharpie to measure out how I wanted the bottom to look. And then I followed the lines with my jigsaw. Now I'm fairly new to using a lot of these tools and it's been a lot of fun and, and a learning curve, I'm not gonna lie, because sometimes I just don't feel 100% comfortable with them. But I have to say I'm super proud for trying. This jigsaw, I don't know, just kind of went its own way <laughs> and did its own thing and I ended up cutting way too high than I actually wanted to but you know what I just kind of go with the flow and I revised what I initially thought the bottoms were going to look like and it all turned out just fine. I think I needed a little bit of break after using the jigsaw, so then I went to something that I am familiar with, and it's a ton of fun. I added some Would You Bend in this basket weave Would You Bend trim onto the top drawers, and this gave the top drawers real texture and interest. It turned out fabulous. I ended up spacing it. Uh, so it's not side by side. I left spaces in between, just using a ruler and eyeballed it. Made sure that the wood you bend was put on straight. It's very easy to do. You just heat this trim up with either a blow dryer, hair dryer, or heat gun. And once it's all warm, it's very pliable and very easy to cut. Then using some wood glue, you place it where you want it on your piece and you just glue it down. You could clamp it down, you could hold it down. This is sandable, it's drillable, it's stainable, it's paintable. Uh, I, I just find this Would You Bend trim fantastic. And I have a full video on how to apply Would You Bend to your painted furniture. And I'll include that in the cards above and also in the description down below. So now on to the part that took me hours. I, oh, I just, this honestly, 
shook the stuffing right out of me. I was down in my sanding room cutting for literally hours and you'd think to cut a square piece of wood would not be that hard. But I'm telling you, friends, I... <laughs> if anybody has any tips for me, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Because for the life of me, using my skill saw, even though I measured 16 and a quarter for each of these, I used my woodworking square, I used this larger square. For some reason, I could not get this skill saw to cut two exact square pieces of wood. I'm even embarrassed to say how many hours I was down there, but you know what? I give myself credit for trying, and, and after many hours, I think I did pretty darn good. Once the two nightstand tops were cut, I used this little router, and I routered the edges for a nice clean finish. To attach the two tops, I flipped the piece upside down on the floor and I drilled pilot holes and I used the original screws that I had taken out when I disassembled the desk. Well, <laughs> here's another embarrassing thing that happened. I must have been exhausted because I didn't measure. There were two types of screws. I didn't measure both of them. For some reason in my mind, I just thought they'd both fit. And a couple of the screws actually pierced through the top of my brand new tops. Oh, I would be lying if I said I wasn't crushed. So I got out the wood filler <laughs> and I sanded and wood filled my mistakes. And then I had to reprime. Um, but you know what? All in the end, it turned out just fine. I find that sometimes with these silly mistakes, I learn so much more than making no mistakes at all. So at least now I'm to the part where I feel comfortable and I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of gorgeous dipped paint finishes on Instagram, Pinterest, and other socials. And I absolutely love how it looks, especially if the contrast is done just right. So I chose to paint the bottom of these nightstands in a paint called Sand Castle. And I chose to paint the top and the top drawer in a color called Coffee Bean. And I'll include those in the description down below. I used a soft paint brush so it would eliminate brush marks. And I don't know if anybody will agree with me. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments, but I find Doing a more clean, modern look often takes more work than an artistic, say, vintage finish. I think that's because when I'm doing a vintage finish or an artistic finish, I mean, you can do numerous paint techniques like a wash or a wax or a texture. You can also use transfers. You can use um, decor paper. You can use stencils. But when it's a clean, modern look, everything has to be pristine. I mean, you can't have any nooks and crannies because there's nowhere to hide them. So I'd be really curious what you guys think on this topic as well. So again, I used a green painter's tape to block off the bottom half and I painted the bottoms in sand castle. While the bottom sand castle was drying, I painted the top and the drawers in this beautiful coffee bean. It's one of my favorites. It's, it's not really a black, it's more like a deep brown black. And I chose it because I thought it tied in with the sand castle beautifully. So after that work day, I was tuckered. I called it a day, went to bed. I came back the next morning after all the paint was dry, sitting overnight, and I removed the green painter's tape and look what happened. It peeled off little bits of paint. So here's a quick tip if you've ever left your painter's tape on too long and you're concerned it's gonna peel back some of the paint when you rip it off, use heat. If you add heat to any sort of adhesive tape, it loosens it up. Uh, so here I'm taking my heat gun, I'm using it on the painter's tape, which sat overnight, and it comes off super, super easy. To finish off my dipped painted look, I added green painter's tape to my sand castle, so the part I already painted and made sure that the line was lined up perfectly. Now here's another quick tip to get a perfectly crisp painted line. 
I promise you, if you use this trick, your paint will not bleed through. And the two colors, whatever two colors you're using will look crisp and sharp. All you have to do is use your original paint color and paint it over the painter's tape before painting your second color. So here, as you can see, I'm using the sand castle and I'm just adding a little bit right over the painter's tape on the top. I let that dry and then I go in with my coffee bean or whatever your secondary color may be. Now this works just fabulous. Here, while my second color is still wet, I'm removing the painter's tape and a little bit of heat allows it to remove really easily. And check out this high contrast. You have the light, the dark, but the line is perfectly crisp. So to finish off these nightstands, I drilled new hardware and I chose them in black, uh, these black ring hardware because it just ties everything together so nicely. I will be spraying these with the satin clear coat, but honestly, it was furniture fixer upper day and I just did not have time. I barely made the deadline as it was. <laughs> so I will be bringing these back down to my studio and giving them a spray top coat. Uh, nightstands are fairly high traffic, so this will make them easy to clean and give them great protection. But let's take a look. Here's the before. And here's the after. And I have to say, even though I put in a ton of work for these, I'm so happy with the way it all came together. And I cannot wait to hear what you think. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before you leave, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell so you get new notifications for all the videos that I put out. Also, I'd love to see you over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. I hope you have a fabulous day and see you again soon. Bye guys.